Only at SuperBowl.com or on America Online, enter keyword Super Bowl. Line of scrimmage as we begin the fourth quarter is the Tennessee 46. 15 minutes to see who comes up against the Tampa Bay Bucks next week. You know, after a tough start, the Titans owner came down pretty hard on his head coach. After checking the yardage, the personal foul, 15-yard penalty, was more advantageous than the pass interference. Therefore, the personal foul was accepted. Oakland's ball at the 46. You can say the Titans owner came down on Jeff Fisher, the head coach, saying that he had been outcoached in some circles and pretty early in the season to do that. And as you see, the Titans putting up a valiant fight here in Oakland today. No, no, I money. I think the Titan owner might regret that a bit. <laughs> More than a bit. Well, either that or he thought his words spurred him on. How's that? Darn. 40. 35. Showing how quick he is. Go down to Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie. Greg, before the game, Jeff Fisher said to me, if the game's close in the fourth quarter, we have the advantage because there's so much pressure on the home team to win. It can be paralyzing. And in a close game, it's easy to panic. He said, we have nothing to lose. We have the edge. Bonnie, thank you. Well, you know what, though? Charlie Garner didn't look very tight on that run. So it, 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 that was Jeff Fisher's thought, and Bonnie is right, that they were hoping to get to the fourth quarter, that they maybe the Raiders would be tired. That's not going to happen. Garner this time will run out of bounds by Lance Schulten. This is a different Raiders team. A couple reasons. You know, one, physically, and Armin Katea talked about it earlier, they are in very good shape, especially for a big team, which they are size-wise. And the other thing that's made them special, I think, this year, they lost four games in a row. And, Greg, we've been out here many times in the past. If they lost four in a row in the past, they would be pointing fingers at each other and it would be an uproar. This year, there wasn't. They held it together and they put on a long winning streak after that. Second down, slant complete inside the 15 to the 10-yard line to Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice against Dana Sidney on the outside. He's caught so many of these passes in his career. What he does, he just makes sure he keeps his body between the football and the defender. Nice throw by Rich Gannon against the Blitz. Garner. And Garner is brought down at about the 12-yard line by Schulter. And we get markers flying. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness defense. Number 91 after the play. A blow to the head. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. That's the rookie defensive tackle, Albert Hainsworth. Ninety-one in the middle of your screen. Missed it. Looked like he might have grabbed the face mask and went to the ground. Nope, here it is. <laughs> you just can't do it. There are too many officials on the field for players. They've got to know you just can't get away with slapping somebody's helmet. First and goal, the ball just outside the five-yard line. Do I need to say it that that was a big penalty? Garner. If he got back to the line of scrimmage, it wasn't by much. Randall Godfrey and Carlos Paul. Boy, not only is the present a wonderful thing for the Tennessee Titans defense, but the future. How about the rotation up front of young, big young people? You talked about the one and four start, Greg, and a lot of it had to do with the fact they had some injuries, but they were playing so many young players. You talked about them. Albert Hainsworth, a rookie. Tank Williams, a rookie. Both starting right off the start this year. Langston Walker is eligible. Zach Crockett is in the backfield. The pass to the far side is complete. And Tim Brown is run out of bounds by Sidney. Sidney. 
Nice reaction by Dane and Sydney. Protecting up the field first. Sees the throw and just runs through the receiver, Tim Brown. When you talk about Tim Brown, wanting to go to the Super Bowl, we talked to him this week. He forbid his wife or anybody at his house to even say the word super or bowl at any time. So live for the moment, win this game first. Again, all kinds of time on the run to the five. Touchdown. to contain on the far side it didn't happen the defense is not even thinking of keeping the quarterback in the pocket rich gannon more active running the football today and what a big moment in decision when to run that time leads to touchdown gannon three touchdown passes he rushes for his first of the day janikowski for the extra point it's again a 10 point lead the Raider bench celebrates. Javon Kirst can't stand it. We'll be back. AC on. you're defending a mobile quarterback you've got to make sure if you are the contained man to the outside stay there Peter Sermon gets caught inside good block by Doug Jolly and Jeff Fisher says oh they held him but no they didn't good reaction by Rich Gannon good block by Doug Jolly Oakland back to a 10 point lead 11 27 to play in the fourth inside the five it's Simon to the 20, 25, forward to the 29-yard line. Tim Johnson with the stop. Charlie Garner and the Raiders. One more win for the Super Bowl. is sponsored by the all-new Accord from Honda. It's more Accord than ever. IBM, taking business to the next level with e-business on demand. And by Miller Lite. Life is best told over a great-tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. Hey, Monday on the Late Show, Dave kicks off an all-new week of Late Shows with infamous, it says here, Phil, celebrity judge Simon Cowell, an all-new top 10 and more that's Monday on the Late Show with David Letterman. McNair and the Titans from their own 29. McNair over the middle to Eddie George, hit immediately, lost the football. It is ruled incomplete. It is an incomplete pass. Napoleon Harris with the hit. Watch Eddie George over the middle. He never gains control of the football. You can hear the crowd from behind, but Eddie George, the football was moving in his hands as he got hit. And Bill Callahan going to challenge. It was ruled incomplete on the field. You could read Ed Hockley's list. Do you him. want a challenge? No. Here's why, Greg. They ruled it incomplete on the field. Bill Callahan has nothing to stand on. So with, if they come back and they, he wants the replay, all they can say is, sorry, it was complete. They get it. You don't get the fumble. The, the play will not be reviewed because if it were, 
the only possible result would be for Tennessee to have a completed pass. The ball was blown dead when the ball hit the ground. Therefore, there is no review on the play. Second down. Gene, if it was a, like a big play down the field, Jeff Fisher could then go, well, excuse me, he's going to throw out his red flag and say, I want the completion. So it's not long enough for Jeff Fisher to take the challenge there. Good job by Ed Hockley explaining it to Bill Callahan. There was nothing to tell. McNair with time. Over the middle, and that's complete for a first down across the 45 to Frank Whitecheck. I'm going to come back. I want to go back and play again. I want somebody to stomp on my thumb so I can go out there and throw it like <laughs> Steve McNair. <laughs> but Steve McNair gets wonderful protection on the play action pass and Frank Whitecheck when you give him the space he likes to say he can't run real fast but he was moving pretty good there 18 yard pickup Sam Adams limped off the field that last play pass incomplete that one intended for Whitecheck also Romanowski covering and it's second and ten Sam Adams on the sideline. Yeah, he had to get a little breath, a little breather. You know, we, I'm, I'm sorry, Bill. We saw Romanowski on Wycheck there, and I go back to Friday when we talked to Romo. He says, Wycheck is crafty, not very fast, not a great blocker, but he gets in your way. <laughs> Was that a compliment or not? I don't I'm know. trying to figure it out. Yeah. Also said he pushes off well. Second and ten. The blitz. McNair. Tried to get rid of it. Hockley waving his arm back where McNair went down. The quarterback was sacked. He was sacked before he released the ball. Third down. Second Raider sack of the night. Greg, you talked about it. You can't pull him down from up high. Watch Steve McNair. Chris Cooper and Napoleon Harris get to him. They go down low. And you, you set it. You get your arms around him and twist him. And boy, what a job by Napoleon Harris. He just runs Eddie George over. He twists Steve McNair and gets him down. Third and 19, McNair calls a timeout with the play clock winding down. Each team down to two timeouts with 10-11 to play in the fourth quarter. Titans miscues, there have been several. Holcomb with a fumble. The kick return, Simon lost the football. The Raiders recover. Hendrick pulled the punt down. Too big a pass rush. They turn the ball over on down. Well, you know, I'm gonna go back to this again because I always listen to why teams are gonna win and why they don't and you say turnovers. Well, what they should say is, we're going to call some turnovers today. That's how we're going to win. Because it's it's just saying, well, we're not going to turn. It's not that simple. Usually you make mistakes on the field because the other team forces you into them. Well, win or lose here tonight, let's see how much longer we hear this silliness about the Oakland Raiders being too old to be a winning team. Well, I, I've tried to dispel that a lot. It doesn't do any good. People still say it. When you're old, that means you're productive in this league, and they, they are productive. Third and 19. McNair down the middle. Incomplete. Corey James batted away. Eddie Berlin, the intended receiver. Boy, Corey James, what a play. We saw him make a special play last week against the Jets. And you hear this all the time about him, that he's fast, he's tall, and he has like the longest arm that you can have for somebody his height. And watch him. Again, he just outruns the football. Oh, and if Anthony Dorsett does not come over, he makes the interception. Tim Brown deep for the punt. Brown says, look at him down. And it's down by the Titans at about the 30-yard line. 31-yard kick, no return. Rich Gannon back on offense after this. I 
love playing two hand touch eating way too much watching my team win with the twins I love quarterbacks eating dirt pom poms and short skirts fans who won't quit and those twins and I love cancer here's the one ball On CBS Wednesday, new singers, models, and comics will compete for a chance to send them home. Since the other back, can't even talk. Robert Tony Hall hosts the show that's sweeping America, the all-new Star Search, live CBS Wednesday and Thursday. Armin Katayan back here in Oakland. Bill Callahan said when he took over for John Gruden, he knew he was taking over an unusual set of circumstances. A team with, he, that would not stand for a three or four or five year plan, Greg. He had to capture this team's attention immediately, their confidence and their respect. He did so and he said by being a risk taker. Those risks have paid off, and he told me before the game how special it would be if he could play and coach in the biggest game of his life against the man he replaced, against the man who hired him, John Gruden. As we all know, he's about 9 minutes and 35 seconds away from doing just that, Greg. Back yeah, you. thank you, Armin, and uh, it would be an interesting situation for the Raiders to go up against their former coach, and we were talking with Rich Gannon about that very thing, and Rich Gannon says that it wasn't so much losing John Gruden as the coach, it was losing him as the play caller that concerned him. Garner. Sings and zags his way to the 45-yard line on a first down. Charlie Garner is just so quick, so explosive, how do you tackle him in the open field? If you just give him some space, the offensive line makes a couple blocks up front, and it is just a lot of shaking. Frank Middleton again out in front doing a good job. I think Armin Katayan, the story about Bill Callahan, he took over a successful team, and he gambled by changing the makeup, by making it a passing team. Across midfield into Tennessee territory, 48 yard line. Tank Williams made the stop. You know, Greg, if you took a team over that's successful, always you'd say, well, let's just don't change anything. Well, Bill Callahan did not take that course. He immediately went to training camp and said, shoot, he's an old line coach. I know an offensive line coach last year. I know we can protect. I got a quarterback and some gifted receivers. Let's throw it. Gannon up over 300 total yards on the night. Garner, this way. 45, 43, first down, Oakland. And to go back to what Rich Gannon was talking about, it was interesting to hear him say that, how he really thought that he was going to miss John Gruden's play calling more than anything else. Now, he, wasn't, he wasn't quite clued in yet that Bill Callahan was going to throw it so much, so... <laughs> Once he found out, he missed John Gruden, but he says, okay, I'll survive. Gannon told but, us I was concerned with the number of times we were throwing early in the season. Yeah, I want to talk about that one second. First down. Gannon, throwing far side, Jerry Porter. Perfectly thrown ball and a nice play by Porter. That's what it was, a perfectly thrown ball to a big receiver. It's good coverage down the field by Donald Mitchell, but Rich Gannon throws it before Donald Mitchell can react to it. Look at Jerry Porter going up. Jerry Porter is going to be a force in this league for years to come. Weakly in the backfield. Weakly with the football. To the 25. You know, Greg, we talk about the throwing of the Oakland Raiders. And, and Rich Gannon also said John Gruden probably didn't do it as much because he worried about Rich Gannon's health. He knew how important Rich Gannon was to the football team. Well, Bill Callahan, of course, knows that, but he entrusts Rich Gannon 
to throw 40 times a game but not take the beat. In other words, get rid of the football, move when you have to, don't let yourself get hurt. And Chris Gannon does a terrific job of that. Gannon going to flip it out here to Garner. Garner to about the point two. Randall Godfrey with the stop. Clock continues to move as we come up on five and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. That ten point difference go back to the tail end of the first half. Two big turnovers led to ten Oakland points, and that's the difference in the game. And how things have changed in the National Football League. The Raiders, of course, they want to score, but their main goal is to manage the game, and they're doing it with outside runs and passes. Third and two. between touchdowns we mentioned earlier not since the 29th of September has he caught a touchdown pass but tonight nine catches 73 yards and has been every bit as big receiver for Gannon as anyone Rich Gannon had 10 300 yard passing games this season pump fake going to throw end zone incomplete Intended for right. Marker is down. And Lance Schultz and Jerry Porter doing a little job. Before the pass is thrown, holding defense number 37. The five-yard penalty and an automatic first down. That's a good five-yard penalty. Smart play by Danon Sidney. Tough to defend Jerry Rice when Rich Gannon pump fake in the corner, giving Jerry Rice time to make the move and go past you. First down Raiders at the Tennessee 11. Looking to put the nail in the coffin. You look at Rich Gannon, you got to give the Raiders organization an unbelievable amount of credit. Al Davis brings in another better quarterback to take him to the Super Bowl, or hopefully to the Super Bowl, just like he did with Jim Plunkett. trip after trip out here to Oakland, we have marveled at the organization's ability to spot talent. Their drafts are almost impeccable. Oh well, of recent years, Greg, they really have selected a tremendous amount of quality players who are delivering on the field. That's that's what you want. So you, we always talk about these old Raider football teams, everybody does, but it's the youth of the team that really that catches my eye how productive the young guys are on the field along with guys like Jerry Rice and Tim Brown. Second and six. Give it to Zach Crockett. Crockett, oh. touchdown! was hoping that the Raiders would get tired and they could beat them in the fourth quarter. But what you're seeing is a physically well-prepared football team who doesn't get tired and is winning the battle in the fourth quarter. Janikowski. His extra point is good. 325 to play. Oakland's lead, 41 to 24. The Raiders on the verge of a Super Bowl berth. Fresh baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. And by Bud Light. 
for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. It's a joyous Network Associates Coliseum. On the Raiders' sideline, it's jubilation. Reality beginning to set in on Steve McNair and the Tennessee Titans. The Raiders, in two games against Tennessee this year, have rung up 93 total points. Janikowski to kick to Simon in Berlin. From the 10, it's John Simon. 25 and wrapped up at about the 29 or 30 yard line and we remind you after the game you can get your official AFC champion locker room gear by clicking on shop at cbssportsline.com or on America Online enter keyword CBS Sportsline. We have an injury down on the field and on the sideline Tim Brown you know reality setting in for him too as he is about to realize the dream of every NFL player. Oh yeah you know great we talked to him on Friday and Dude, it was hard to watch him. He just said he didn't even want to think about it or really talk about going to the Super Bowl. It was just something he's worked so hard for. So many years of catching passes across the middle. What a joy it must be for him. Brandon Christensen being helped off the field as Jerry Rice celebrates on the sideline. Now, we'll talk about a guy who came in with a little chip on his shoulder and something to prove that his playing days weren't over. Jerry Rice has been everything that the Oakland Raiders wanted out of him and more. as his receiver, number 89, Frank Wycheck, fell down. Yeah, you know, the other guy, too, Greg, is Rich Gannon. We've talked so much about him over the year. And I get asked all the time on radio stations and by news media people, why is it taking Rich Gannon so long to be a frontline starting NFL quarterback? And I really believe it's just this. Because he throws the ball a little unorthodox and he just wasn't that beautiful prototype Stand in the pocket, guy to throw it, that team didn't believe he could consistently get it done. Even though everywhere he's been, he's played well. The Raiders believe, John Gruden believed, and he has been magnificent. Holcomb leveled by Napoleon Harris, who has dished out a couple of those shots here tonight. Line of scrimmage to 35. Take a look. Well, it's swing for the fences time for the Raiders defense. Just run and just. <laughs> Watching the expressions, just let it go because you know what the offense is going to do. McNair on the move, gets rid of it. That's complete to the 40 yard line. To Eddie Berlin, and it appears it to be enough for a first down. It is. And let's not forget the job that Jeff Fisher has done in Tennessee. This team off to a 1-4 and four start and came down the stretch like a runaway freight train. McNair throws. Holcomb manages to hold on and is down at the 42-yard line. And that will bring us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes before the Raiders are off to San Diego. So, um, would you like to try that out? What? No, um... Why not? You know, a lot of guys do. Really? Yeah. I think it's sexy. You, you do? Very. And I'll never do. Maybe just this once. I think that's three Bud Lights you owe me. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. What are they? Beans. Beans? What kind of beans? Magic business beans. How do they work? You plant them. 
and a totally integrated, seamless infrastructure will grow overnight. From a beam. minutes to play. Bill Romanowski roaming the Oakland sideline. McNair going to go deep and being held on the way is Drew Bennett. Charles Woodson guilty of the interference call. So that will advance the Titans deeper into Oakland territory. You know what's a shame? It's a shame they don't have the two-week chance to Pass get ready. interference, defense, number 24. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. First down. One, to let guys like Charles Woodson get a chance to get healthy. But really, the biggest reason why I like the break, and I know a lot of fans don't, but it just allows the players to really enjoy it, to get all the legwork done about getting their wife and their family to the game, let them get organized, let them get healthy so they can go out and really play their best football game in the biggest game of their life. Clarence Love onto the field for Charles Woodson. First down, McNair. And McNair throws, and that's complete to Bennett. And Bennett to the 15. And it's complete to Drew Bennett. Romanowski Roman. with the stop. Boy, you mentioned Romo. Romo told us on Friday, I truly believe when I called Al Davis, I could help him win a Super Bowl. They needed help on defense. And I thought I could help him prepare and work toward that goal. And he has. He has been a very good influence on the whole team. To the 11-yard line, Robert Holcomb. And you know what? To be a guy like Bill Romanowski, I know he gets talked about a lot, but to be as many years as he's been in the league, a linebacker to run as fast as he still can, the way he takes care of himself, Greg, we know it. We see it when we come to the Raider complex. So many guys on this team take better care of themselves now than they ever did in the past. It's because of Bill Romanowski. We remind you, coming up tonight on CBS, everybody loves Raymond. After our post-game coverage, coming your way live from Network Associates Coliseum. You know, we were talking about this Raider organization before the game began, Phil. How about all of the old Raiders that Al Davis brings back you yeah. see them roaming the sidelines before the game. We saw Daryl LaMonica downstairs. Ted Hendricks, uh, every week it's, uh, you get to look down there and see a different Hall of Famer from the Raiders past years. But it's... That's Jim Motto in front of Al Davis. McNair trying to get his team into the end zone again. Overthrown and out of play. Intended for Bennett. But it's good, you know, to go back to that. I just think it makes it nice. It gives all the players, uh, they know they're playing in a special place. You know, a piece of history. It's, it's, it's wonderful to see it. It's very much akin to a family reunion. Second and ten. about Steve McNair just outside of a minute remaining still firing bullets every bit the valiant warrior in defeat you look at his numbers good day his running has been important Tennessee would not have been in this at all if it wasn't for Steve McNair maybe in the offseason Steve will just go to the hospital <laughs> third and ten throws inside the 10, that's complete to the five yard line is Holcomb, and Chris Cooper with a heavy hit, and the clock continues to move, 55 seconds, fourth and four.
McNair, one last shot at getting into the end zone. Hey, that don't play. Raiders dropping just about everybody. On the move. Still on the move. Throws incomplete. Twenty-nine seconds to play. And the Raiders' trip to the Super Bowl is secure. They won Super Bowl XI with a 32-14 win over Minnesota. They were triumphant over the Eagles, 27-10 in Super Bowl XV. And they beat Washington, 38-9 in Super Bowl XVIII. As time winds down here, the executive producers of the NFL on CBS are Sean McManus and Tony Petiti. Coordinating director, Larry Cavalina. Today's game produced by Mark Wolf. The senior producer of CBS Sports in the NFL today is Eric Mann. And the director is Bob Matina. Coordinating producer of CBS Sports is Harold Bryant. The associate directors of today's game, Steve Karasik and Pete Radovich Jr. Our replay producer is Jay Brian Lilly. And our broadcast associates, Corey Fishman and Kamani Morales. Technical manager, Pete Kalander. Our technical director, Scott Sickler. And the audio supervisor is Phil Adler. All outstanding performers all season long. Bill Romanowski in search of another ring. Rich Cannon in search of his first. As time winds down on our season here on CBS, we can't say thanks enough to our terrific crew performed admirably all season long it's been an awful lot of fun it has Greg a wonderful way to end it an exciting game the Oakland Raiders the best team in the AFC during the season and now going to the Super Bowl Steve McNair as he said valiant in defeat a wounded quarterback down the stretch for Phil Simms Armin Katayan and Bonnie Bernstein. Greg Gumbel saying so long from Network Associates Coliseum. Our final score, the Raiders win it, 41-24. Stay tuned. The Subway Postgame Show comes your way next. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.